from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering InterConnect 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to InterConnect 2017 from Las Vegas, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. Bina Hallman is here, she's a CUBE alum and the Vice President of Offering Management for Storage and Software Defined at IBM, and she's joined by Tahir Ali, who's the Director of Enterprise Architecture at the City of Hope Medical Center. Folks, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks Thank so you much, much for coming on. Thank Thanks you. for having us. So Bina, we'll start with you. Uh, been to theCUBE a number of times. Yes. Uh, give us the update on what's happening with, uh, with IBM and Interconnect. Yeah, no, it's a great show. Lots of exciting announcements and such from a IBM Perspective Storage, we've been very busy filling out our whole uh, flash portfolio, adding a complete set of hybrid cloud capabilities to our software-defined storage. So it's been a great 2016 and we're off to a great start in 2017 as well. Yeah, Ginny's going to be here tomorrow, That's so right. everybody's looking forward to that. So Tahir, let's get into City of Hope. Uh, tell us about the organization and your role. Sure, sure. So, um, City of Hope is one of the, the 47 comprehensive cancer centers in the nation. Um, we deal with uh, cancer, of course, uh, HIV, um, diabetes, and other uh, life-threatening diseases. We are maybe 15 to 17 miles uh, east of uh, Los Angeles. So, my role uh, in particular, I'm uh, uh, a director of enterprise architecture, so all new technologies, all new applications that land on City of Hope. We go through all the, the background, see how the security is going to be, how it's going to implement in, in our environment, if it's even possible to implement it, making sure we talk to our business owners, figure out if there's a disaster recovery uh, requirements, um, if they have a HA requirement, if it's a clinical versus non-clinical application. So we look at a whole stack and see how a new application fits into the infrastructure of City of Hope. So, you guys do a lot of research there as well? Or Absolutely. It, yeah, so so we, we are research, we are uh, the small EDU, um, and we are the medical center. So, so a lot of data. A whole lot of data, just data is just keeps coming and keeps coming and it's almost like never ending stream of data. Now, with the data, it's not only just data, uh, individual data is also growing. So a lot of imaging that happens for, for cancer uh, research or a cancer medical center gets bigger and bigger per patient as the, the, the three-dimensional you know, uh, imaging is, is uh, here. We, we look at resolution that is so much more today than it used to be five years. So every single image itself is so much bigger today than it used to be five years ago. Just a sheer difference in the resolution and the dimensions of the data. So what are the big drivers uh, in your industry? And how is it affecting your, the, the architecture that you put forward? Right. So I think a uh, uh, couple of huge things that are, that are maybe two or three huge convergence points or the pivot points that we see today. One of them is just the data stream as I, I, I mentioned earlier. The second is because uh, a lot of the PHI and, and HIPAA data that we have today, security is a huge concern in a lot of the healthcare uh, environment. So those two things, and it's, it's almost like a cash 22. More data is coming in, you have to figure out where you're going to put that data, but at the same time you got to make sure every single bit is secured enough. So there's, there's a cash 22 where it's going, where, where you have to make sure that data keeps coming and you keep securing the same data, right? So th those two, two things that we see pivoting the way we strategize around our infrastructure. It's hard, they're in conflict in a way. Because Absolutely. You, you got to lock the data up, but then you want to provide accessibility. Absolutely. As, as Absolutely. well, so paint a picture of your infrastructure and the applications that it's supporting. Right, so we, our infrastructure is, is mainly in-house and our EMR is currently uh, off-prem. Um, a lot of clinical and non-clinical also stay in-house with us in our data center uh, on-prem. Now we are kind of starting to migrate to uh, um, cloud technologies more and more as, as just things are ballooning. So we are in that, that middle piece where, where some of our infrastructure is in-house, slowly we are migrating to, to a cloud. So we are at like a hybrid currently. And, and as, as things progress, I think more and more is going to go to the cloud, but for a medical center, security is everything. So we have to be very careful where our data sits. So Bina, when you hear that from a client, mm -hmm. how do you respond uh, and, and you know, what do you propose and how does yeah. it all 
Yeah, well, well. you know, as we um, see clients like to hear and some of the requirements in these spaces, security is definitely a key factor. So as we, you know, develop our products, as we develop capabilities, we ensure that security is a number one focus area for us. So whether it's for the on-prem storage, whether it's for the data that's in motion from moving from the on-prem into the cloud and secure completely you know, all the way through where the client has the control on the security, the keys, et cetera. So a lot goes into making sure as we architect these solutions for our clients that we, we focus on security. And of course, some of the other requirements, industry-specific requirements, are also very important, and we focus in on those as well, whether it's regulatory or compliance requirements, right? Yeah. So from a, from a sort of portfolio standpoint, what are you guys doing is all kinds of innovations over the last four or five years coming in with Flash. You know, we heard about object stores this morning. We got, we got cloud, you got block, you got file. What are you guys doing? So, so we do a lot of different things. So from, from having filers in-house to doing block storage from, and, and, and the worst thing now uh, these days with big data is as the data is growing, the security needs are growing, but the end result with the researchers and our physicians, the data availability needs to be fast. So now comes a bigger cache 22 where the data is so huge, but at the same time, they want all of that very quickly on their fingertips. So now what do you do? That's where we bring in a lot of the flash to upfront it. 10 to 12% of our infrastructure has flash in the front. This way, all the rendering or all the, the writes that happen are first land on, on the flash. So everybody who writes feels like it's a very quick write but there's a petabyte and petabytes behind the scene that could be on-prem, it could be on the cloud, but they don't need to know that. It's, everything lands so fast that it looks like it's just local and fast. So there's a lot of crisscross that is happening and, and started maybe four or five years ago with the, with, the, with the speed of data is not going to be slow. The, the size of data increasing like crazy and then the security is becoming bigger and bigger concern as, as, as you know, that every, maybe every month or month and a half there's a, there's a breach somewhere that, that people have to deal with. So we have to handle all of that in, in one shot. So you know, it's, it's, it's more than just, just the infrastructure itself. There's policies, there's procedures, there's a lot that goes around. And so when you think about architecting, uh, obviously you think about workloads and what the workload requirement is. It's not a one size fits all. Right, right. Um, so where do you start? Do you start with sure. sort of, you know, a conversation with the business? Sure. Sure. Uh, how much money do you got? <laughs> so we, we don't really deal with the money at all. Okay. It's, uh, we, we provide the best possible solution for that business requirement. So the conversation happens, tell us what you're looking for. Uh, we are looking for a very fast X, Y, Z. Okay, uh, tell us what exactly you need. Here's the application, we want it available all the time, and this is how it's going to look like. It can be down because our, our patients are depending on it, so on and so forth. We take that, we talk to our vendors. We look at exactly how it's architected. If it's, let's just say, three tier, there's a web, there's an app, and then there's a database. You already know by default that if it's a database, it's going to go on a, on a high transactional uh, uh, I.O. where either it's a flash or a very fast spinning disk with a lot of spindles. From there you get the application. Could be a virtual machine, could not be a virtual machine. From there you get to a web uh, 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 tier. Web tiers are usually always um, uh, on, a, on a virtual uh, infrastructure. Then you realize if you want to put it on a DMZ so people from outside can, can get to it or it's only for internal use. Then you draw the entire architecture diagram out. Then you price it out. You said, okay, if you want this to be always on, maybe you need a, a database that is always on, right? Or you need a database that replicates 24 seven. That has a cost associated to that. If you have an application, if you want a two application, maybe it's a cluster application. It could be HA, it could not be HA. So there's a, there's a cost to that. Web servers are kind of you know, cheaper tier of, of uh, virtual machines. And then there's an there's a architecture diagram. All the, the requirements are met in there and there's a cost associated to that saying he, business uh, unit, here is how much it's going to cost and this is what you will have. Okay, so that's where the economics comes exactly. into play. You say, okay, yeah. this is what your requirements are. Yeah. This is based on that what we would advise, exactly. yeah. 
and then essentially it's can you afford it. Right. right. If, if, <laughs> if, if, if you want to buy a, a house that is uh, three bedrooms and, and three bathrooms <laughs> in Palo Alto versus uh, six bedrooms and then seven bathrooms in Palo Alto, there's going to be a financial impact that you might not like. So it's one of those, right? So what you want is, has a financial impact on your, on your end, end solution. And that's what we provide. We don't, we don't force somebody to get something. We just give them, hey, if you want, how many kids do you have? Four kids, then maybe you need a five-bedroom house, right? So we kind of do that. Is it common yeah. discussion? Yeah, it is. It is. And that's uh, you know, some of the things we do focus on, right? As we, in addition to the security aspect of it, of course, is around the automation, around driving in the efficiencies, because at the end of the day, you know, whether it's capital expense or operational expense, you want to have optimized for both of those. And that's where, as we architect the solutions, develop the offerings, we ensure that we build in capabilities, whether it's storage efficiency capabilities like virtualization or dedupe or compression, but as well as this uh, automated tiering tearing off from flash to sure. uh, lower tier, whether it's on-prem, uh, you know, lower, a slower Could spinning a disc, speed, yeah. a speed disk, or, or tape, or even off to the cloud, right? And being able to do that, provide that, I think addresses uh, many of our clients' needs. That's a common requirement that we do here. And you said mentioned 10 to 12% is flash. Right. The rest, you know, 90% or so is, is is something else, that's economics, correct? Right. And so, how do you see that changing? So I think um, the percentage won't really change. I think the, the data size will change. So, so and, and, and you have to just, just think about things just in generality, just, just what you do today. You know, when you take a, a picture, maybe you look at it the first three days, even if you have a phone. After three days, maybe you look at it maybe once every two months. After three months, guess what? You will always never look at them they kind of moved away from even your memory banks in your head and you say, oh, I was looking through it and then maybe once in a while you look at it. So you have to look at the behavior. A lot of the applications have the same behavior where the new data is required right away. The older the data gets, the more ar archival state it gets. It gets warmer and then it gets colder. Now, as a, a healthcare institute, we have to devise something that is great financially also has the security and put away in a way where we can pull it without having pain to pull it back. So that's where the tiering comes to play, doesn't matter how we do it. And, and your planning assumption is, is that the cost disparity between flash and other forms of storage will remain, that, that, that other so, forms will remain cheaper. Right, so we, we, we are hoping, but I think uh, the, the hybrid model of flash so, so once you do a hybrid with flash and disk, then, then it, becomes, it becomes a little more economically uh, suitable for, for a lot of the, the people. They do the same thing. They do tiering, but they make it look like a, a, a bigger platform. So they like, ah, we can give you a petabyte, but it's going to look like flash. It doesn't work like that. They might have uh, 300 uh, uh, terabyte of flash, 700, but it's so integrated quickly that they can pull it in and push it. Then there's a read aheads, write aheads that takes that advantage to make it look like it. That will drop your pricing, the special sauce that transfer the, the data between slower and flash disks. So uh, two, two questions for you. Sure. What do you look for in a, in a supplier and, and what drives you nuts about a supplier that you don't want a supplier to do? Sure, so, so personally speaking, and this is just my personal opinion, you know, um, a, a stable environment, uh, a, a tried and true uh, a vendor is important. Somebody who has a core competency of, of doing this for a longer term is what I personally look at. There's a lot of new players who come in, they stay for a couple of years, they explode, somebody takes them over, or they just kind of vanish. So, or certain people go outside of their core competency. So, if Toyota started to make because they wanted to save money, they said, hey, Toyota from now on will make the tires that are called Toyota. But Toyota is not a tire company. Other companies, Bridgestone and Michelin's have been making tires for a very long time. So the core competency of, of uh, uh, Toyota is building the cars and not the tires. So when I see these people or, or the vendors saying, okay, I can give you this, 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 and this, and that, and the security, and that, maybe three out of those five things are not their core competency. 
So you, I start to wonder if the whole stack is worth it because there's going to be some weakness because they don't have the core competence. That's what I look at. What drives me crazy if, is every single time somebody comes to, to meet with me, they want to sell me everything in a kitchen sink under one umbrella. And, and the answer is one single pane of glass to manage everything. Life is not that easy. I wish it was, but it really is not. So those two things Selling are... Selling the fantasy, right. Yeah. All right, Bina, we'll give you the last word. Uh, interconnect, give us your final thoughts. What should we know about what's going on in Software Defined and IBM Storage? Yeah, you know, lots, lots of announcements said Interconnect. You heard, as you talked about, cloud object storage. We've got great new pricing models and capabilities and overall Software Defined Storage. We're continuing to innovate, continue to add capabilities like analytics, and you'll see us doing more and more around cognitive cognitive storage management to get more out of the data, help clients get more information and value out of their data. What's the gist of the new pricing models? Just um, Flexible pricing or? model, depending on how the, both hybrid as well as a three-tiered on-prem and in between, but really cold as well as a flexible pricing model where depending on how you, how, how you use the data, you know, you get consistent pricing. So between on-prem and in so the So more cloud-like yes, pricing. exactly. Great, yep. easier consumption, excellent. Well, Bina Terrier, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. Yes, sir, thank, thank you. Thank you for having You're us. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest and a wrap right after this short break. Right back.